Welcome to Purbeck 22. This is the sort of map that I just always come back to. I've played about this since FS15. It was actually called Naveswell Farm originally, then Naveswell Extended, then Purbeck, and now we have Purbeck 22. It is an absolutely incredible map, although I'm probably going to play it as if it was only Naveswell. So the Naveswell map was pretty much all of this top area here, but it got massively extended, which is lovely. We'll have to obviously go to these places to get to the store and to go to sell points and everything. But as for buying fields and owning fields, we're going to stick in this sort of area over here. We can go a little bit further this way as well. So you can see that we actually do start off with quite a lot of land already. Uh, it's actually in plots, so it's not just per field. That's four fields in this plot here, or five fields actually. Five fields in this plot. Uh, so that's pretty nice, but it is mostly grass. So we, we want to also do a lot of arable. Um, so that's going to involve turning some of these grass fields into arable. So we've got a cultivator. But before we get into any of that, let me just show you all of the equipment that we start off with. We do start off with quite a bit, but not so much that there's absolutely nothing to work towards at all. Uh, there's always going to be plenty to work towards, including more land. So we start off with this lovely John Deere 6430 Premium with this uh, lovely Quadrant 1200 baler on the back by class. Uh, this actually was part of the map already. It was already integrated into the map. Um, I've just kept that. But that looks like a really nice track. It's a good setup. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's got a chip tuned engine to make it more powerful. Uh, although that might have been a different one, I'm not too sure. We then have the T5 115, uh, which has got these different wheels on. I think they're Nokians. Uh, also, we've got a front loader with this uh, fantastic bail grab. On the back we've got plenty of weight so that we don't do a big wheelie which is what I tend to do. <laughs> and uh, yes we also have this trailer which I'm hoping to restore in the future. We can put a new bed on, put some better wheels on, although the wheels are pretty good but we can put bigger chunkier wheels on. We could even put double wheels on so that's gonna be really interesting. You can even see we've got some straw still on the bed from the previous load of uh, bales that were transported on it. Now, we're getting a bit bigger. We have got this. This is our top tractor, the Class Axion 850, which I think is around 250 horsepower. I might be a bit wrong there. Somewhere around 250 anyway. So that is going to be pulling the cultivator, which we have just behind it, just here. It looks big. It is big. But yes, once we get into a big, big field, it's going to feel smaller. Uh, now these fields look pretty tiny, but they're not that tiny. Some of them are, like 43, but like here, th these, th these are quite big. I've uh, owned those fields in the past. Now, yeah, I think there's actually less trees than on previous versions of this game. I remember in FS15, driving through here was so dense, it was just really dense trees. So I've added some more trees. All of those that you see there are not in the map originally. I've added them in, just to bring a bit more life, tree life, to this area. Because uh, I do like the uh, the very dense, foresty fields. <laughs> Which is uh, weird, because then I always crash into them. Anyway, yes, that's the sort of uh, map that I like. I love the FS15 version for that. Our Combine Harvester, that's not ours over there, the 770. We have the 320, so considerably smaller. Uh, it's going to be a really good combine for the farm. Actually, it looks gigantic, but it is the perfect size with the 770 uh, header. In fact, it is, if I'm not mistaken, the smallest header that can be bought in that range. The 770, they go super big now, like the 13-something. Uh, so we, we need to get that transported back to the farm. But I'll just quickly show you the drill and the trailer that we have. We have this lovely... What is it? Brogan? Sorry about my pronunciations there. Uh, uh, by 4D modding. Absolutely lovely. Pretty well spec'd out as well. We've got the mud guards, massive chunky wheels, and a lighting kit. Different lights. In fact, we're probably not going to really see them properly until we switch them on. So we'll be transporting that back in a minute. And the seed drill. I always struggle with seed drills. This is just the perfect seed drill for nearly every map. So I just went with it. Um, so yeah, that's going to hopefully get the drilling done pretty quickly. So if this is a new map to you, I'll just show you the journey back from the store. 
whilst I explain a couple of things, firstly, I have integrated the mud system into this map. I don't know why, but I always seem to do it. I think it's probably because in FS15 it had a sort of mud system uh, implemented into it anyway. I used to get stuck in the mud going through the cow's field. So yeah, I just think this is a great map for mud. I think it's only going to really activate until it rains, but you can also basically fill a trailer full of mud and tip it wherever you want, and then you can make muddy areas. But I think we're going to contend enough with the mud um, <laughs> when, when it rains. So yeah, things will be slipping around, we'll get stuck when we're cultivating if it's too wet. So that'll be interesting. It's a nice system to have. And the other thing is, when are we going to do the series? Well, it is replacing the old stream farm. I don't know when Court Farms is going to be out, but it's, this is not going to stop when that's released. They're both going to keep going. So when that is released, if Vintage Survival is still going, this will be just once a week. So here we are. You can see, certainly, we're certainly in Dorset, Swanage, Wareham, Studland. Very nice places. And yeah, the one thing which is very noticeable about this yard is it's tight for bigger machinery. So we are going to have to put the combine into this piece down here. Although actually I could put on several pads I've noticed around. Um, I think for now we will put it in here though. This is the barn which I tend to use for bales, so I think we'll probably stack bales in here again. It looks like we do have a silo for grain though, which I don't think this map used to have. And there's always been the slurry pit here, because this of course is predominantly a cow farm. So we will be getting cows. And we do only start off with uh, 50,000 pounds. Oh yeah, I need to turn off the option. We need to um, keep the engine running. Yeah, I'll have to probably park this a bit neater when we get a minute. But we do need to start drilling because we currently have, a, I think, no crops. And we are using the calendar. Seasonal growth is enabled. So, it's March. We, we can put in wheat, spring wheat, spring barley, that sort of stuff. Uh, not too sure why we can put in canola, but that's nice anyway. I think we'll just be targeting wheat and barley to begin with. Uh, but we could do things like sunflowers when we get a planter. Right, let me just change the option. I should have done that before. Uh, let's see here. Seasonal growth, yes. Fixed visual month, no. Snow on. Uh, crop destruction, yeah, we'll keep it on for now. Field stone, yeah, it's field stone. I think it's a bit of a pain to be on. I'm going to keep that off. Um, yeah, we'll keep lime and weeds on. There we go. Automatic engine start off. I think everything else is about right. There we go. Perfect. So let's head back to the store. Let's go and pick up the drill. I'll show you the trailer as well. Uh, we'll buy some seed and I think we're going to have to get drilling. But, at the same time, we need to also really get going with the mowing because we need food for cows. We don't have any, but we need some. As I said, this is a cow farm. We need to get as many cows as possible. We need the food first. I look forward to working in the fields over on the far western side of the map. Uh, if you watch my FS15 series, you'll know why. I, just, I don't know why. Those grass fields, they just feel so nice to work in where you go through the river to get to one of them. Yeah, this map always brings back so many memories, particularly that area. So we're going towards Swanage to get to the store. And then we're going down here. And there it is. Okay, yeah, so first of all, let's just have a look at this trailer. Let's have a look at the lights, because I did go with a, uh, I think it was a full lighting kit. I just couldn't resist. Now, I should have beacons. There we go. I turned them off. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there are certainly a lot of lights. I think it's because it's dark. We can't really see. It will look very impressive at night. It's just a bit too light to see it all. 
uh, be lit up like a Christmas tree. Anyway, yes, we'll be taking that back at a later date. Let's just drop off the trailer. You can see the stand has gone down. It's all animated, so it doesn't just fall off the moment you press the detach button. Okay. And it seems only right that we have a class, since it is a class dealer. Uh, as for the volume of the other tractors, the John Deere seemed a bit loud, but it might be alright. So we'll see. Anyway, this is where we start spending money. We're going to buy two fertiliser bags and probably three seed bags to begin with. Um, yeah, of course we are spending money to make money, so that's the main thing. Uh, it looks like I probably can fit three into there. But I don't want to spend too much money because we, we need to make sure we've got enough to buy animals and we're not really going to be making much money before harvest. So we need to be careful. We need to buy what we need. We could always come back for some. And there are the seed bags. I don't know if this map's got a, like a different shader on or something. It looks like different lighting. Unless it's just me. Maybe, maybe it's my eyes. I don't know. Anyway, they have taken... Not even two full bags, actually. But we will be using all of that. There are several fields to drill. So we're set to wheat. We'll do wheat. We need straw for the cows. And we also do have a cow pasture. As well as the main cow shed. So we can also put cows in there if we want to. Okay. I'll see you back at the farm. I am hoping the New Holland is going to perform well when picking up bales, because that is our only way of picking up bales. But at least it's a quadrant baler, and not a round baler. Uh, yes, especially on these hillsides, we don't want bales rolling away. So, I think, indeed, this is one of our fields that needs to be drilled. So we do have a bit of grass at the bottom here, which we can plow up if we want to but yeah on the minimap it looks like a pretty small field but as you can see it's not really small we do have quite a lot of land which is why I think maybe a few people I might be wrong but maybe a few people will be looking at what I've bought and thinking wow that is big machinery for this map but no this map actually does have some pretty large fields uh, okay so this direct drill actually will drill that's grass, and that's why it's taking that texture. Which is a shame, because it's making it look a bit messy. But the point is, we're putting in wheat. We are drilling. And we do need power as well, that's the other thing. Some of these hillsides are quite steep. And when you're pulling a cultivator up it, or even a drill, it's quite hard on the tractor. You can see it is struggling a bit. Well... I wouldn't say struggling, I'd say it's it's loaded, it's it's loaded uh, to its capacity, almost. It's working hard. Yes, that is annoying, because if we only have that texture on that first piece, it's going to look a bit weird. Although it will disappear the moment it germinates. But we have just two months, today and tomorrow, to put the crops in. Maybe I'll try and keep that texture going. Just a little bit messy. And yes, I might as well uh, incorporate that grass area. And once this field's done, we can go hunting for the next field, which I don't think is going to be a difficult job. We do have quite a few cultivated fields.
That is the first field pretty much done. I'm really hoping with this farm that we can fertilize all the fields in future with slurry or manure. Probably slurry or maybe both. We could do both. Because that's what's nice about it. The fields that we own are so close to the farm. Like carting slurry is going to be pretty fast. Nice and easy. And there we have it. Our wheat field is done. It's all drilled. Yes, yeah, so that pad just there, um, probably used for bales or something. We, it doesn't really matter what we put there, but it is a good place for bales. Wrapped bales especially. Silage bales. Right, so moving on. We do have field number 36 and I think 35... What is 35? I don't think it's grass. No, it's not. So 35 and 36. And then I think everything else is grass. 60. We have 60. So it looks like we do actually have four arable fields. To access 60, I think we just go down here. Well, actually, hang on, hang on. 60, 60 is weird. Because it looks like grass. Let me just walk down there. Yes, yeah, so on the minimap it's showing up as a grass colour. It is grass. Okay, interesting. I, I don't know why, because like, all these fields go green when you click grass, but 60 doesn't. I think it works out. I think it's the cow pasture. So it's not actually sort of usable for us. It's not something we're going to cut. So we do, we've got three. We've got three arable fields. And they're pretty big. 36 is pretty big too. Really should drive more in uh, first person because it's uh, a much more immersive way of playing. Thing is that when you're in the field, it just feels more natural to do it in third person. Yeah, this is big. This is very big. So, wheat again. I am hoping... Well, I know that these poles are going to be a pain. But I am hoping that we can get a worker to do some of this. I remember this field. <laughs> I've had problems with workers in here before. I think I actually used cosplay to get around that problem. But I'd be interested to see how the FS22 worker system can deal with those poles. When I get to the end of here, I'm going to put it on a worker. And hopefully the worker has got a brain. And yeah, see, it'd be good if they can just do the whole field. We are going to run out of seed. I think we're going to be alright for fertiliser. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and buy a pallet fork. We're going to take the New Holland with the uh, old trailer. And we're going to bring the seed bags back. So, worker, it's your time to shine. Let's see how well you do. We'll have to keep a close eye on it. So as for the uh, bell spike, or the bell grab, I think we'd be better off just keeping it here. So, let's see. I think these, these tight sheds are probably good for bells too, actually. I know it opens out much more down here, where we've got the silage pits. I could even keep it in the silage pit, although we've got space in the shed. Yeah, just keep this here. Oh, uh, If I'm not mistaken, we also own a windrower and a tether, but they might have spawned at a different farm. So we'll have to retrieve them. We will also have to leave the weight here because we uh, can't attach that trailer with this weight. I've already tried it. But I think with those bags we'll be alright. We should be able to uh, lift them up without doing a big wheelie. After all, it is a T5 and not a T4. So it's going to have a bit more weight to it.
Yes, yeah, so it'll be interesting when it rains. Everything is going to become muddy. We'll have to buy a tow chain. Okay, progress update with the worker. It did stop. It said it had finished. It went up and went down. Nothing to do with the post at all. But it's on its way again. Let's see if it can manage more than just once up and once down. I think it should be able to. I've just realised it thinks that we own a field down here. I'll have to get rid of that. We only own the fields near the farm. Right, okay, so... Front loader attaches. We'll go with this one, the one which we always go with. So yeah, it's going to be a good test for this tractor. It should be pretty good. But when we're lifting bales, we'll have a much heavier weight, but we'll have a big heavy weight on the back. We've got nothing. <laughs> uh, so this is still a good test to see how good it is at lifting things with no counterweight. I know you should never really lift without a counterweight, but it's still a good test. Okay, so that is pretty much on its limit. I think one of these bags is partially emptied. But yeah, it would be absolutely fine with just one. In fact, if I drive very carefully, we could probably even do this. Because I have gone with... Did I go with rear weights? I think I did go with rear weights. Yeah, these black discs here. They are rear weights. I don't know if they actually function as a weight in this game. I know in previous versions they haven't, but that might have changed. Okay, we're going to have to do one at a time, which is fine. Number one. It is easier from first person view. And number two. There we go. Fabulous. So we'll throw a strap over them. We don't want to be losing them. And we can take them to the drill. Is the drill still going? Oh, it is. Oh, this will be interesting. There is something in its path in just a second. Oh, it's done that one, though. And it's done it very well. That is impressive. Whoa, that that's one of the trailers from FSO 9, or maybe 13. That looks gigantic. But despite it only being March, all the grass fields are showing is ready to cut and we can't really fertilize them until they've been cut and we don't have any slurry yet anyway so I think the sooner we start to cut these fields the better we need it for food for the cows so I think today we can probably do one small field we do only have that small mower so that is going to have to be on our well, pretty high power shopping list a new mower or maybe to begin with we'll have um, a front mower because then we can have the rear mower and a front mower but let's just go and take this to the other field yeah I think this tractor's done a good job really it can transport one bag without tipping forwards with no weight yeah I bet it gets muddy through here 
right there is the tractor I will have to just tell the worker to stop seems a shame to make it stop but we have to really ok let's fill that up Yeah, it's gone around that pole too. I, I wish I had seen it actually, because that is quite a, an impressive job that's been done. Very commendable. But anyway, yes, we, we have a, a job to do um, in a grass field. Maybe we should use the John Deere. Because then I can get some feedback on volume. I'm going to find out anyway when I edit. But it's, it's probably best that I don't record a full episode with the John Deere just to find out it's too loud. Maybe this tractor's too loud. I don't know. But for now, we'll just park this tractor here. There we go. Turn the beacons off. Very good. Let's see. Yeah, I can't really tell. The thing is, how loud is it when I'm talking? It doesn't really match if it's loud if I'm not talking. Okay, i got to watch that tail swing. Oh, close. <laughs> Actually, I think I did hit it. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go into this field here. Little 43. Which actually is quite a big field for this mower. I think we're going to have to purchase a front mower pretty quickly. But I can go with mods, I can go with use machines. Wow. Okay, it's alright if you're looking for something big and expensive. Right, let's unfold this. This is going to have to be hay, I suppose. I'm not running precision farming or anything. Or any other game changing mods. So, yeah. Well, anything. Silage or hay, it doesn't really matter what we go with. Just something. They, they both need to be made. It's not a bad working with, though, actually. Yeah, that is wide. As I said, I'll have to try and locate my <laughs> tether and windrow. We have them somewhere. They've probably spawned at a different farm. Because, as I said, the, the mower, the windrow and the tether were starting off machines. Everything else I've added to this save game. So they could have been anywhere. Luckily, the mower was local. Okay, I take back what I said about it being a big feel for this mower. Certainly not. Yes, I underestimated this mower. It's, it's nothing of a job. Nice and easy. Uh, which is great, because it means tomorrow, well, next episode, um, we're going to be able to just come into here, tell it, windrow it, and bail it. As for silage... Well, we have pits, so I think we're going to have to invest in a forage wagon as well. See, there's so much stuff we have to buy. Yeah, although we start off with a lot of stuff, there's still an awful lot of money that needs to be spent to get just the, the bare minimum, really. We, we don't even have any way of producing silage. We don't have a bale wrapper, we don't have a forage wagon. Loving this tractor though, very responsive. Ready to shift between forwards and reverse extremely quickly. 
making it good for mowing. Okay, can we get that piece? Not quite. So to finish off with, we're going to go anti-clockwise around the field. So we can really get close to those hedges without ripping them out. At least that's the plan. Yep, that's certainly close enough. Looking good. And I think, yeah, all these fields behind are ours. 42, yeah, that's ours. So I don't think land is going to be a problem for us. It's machinery, spending money on animals. Actually, it would be nice to also buy some sheep. We'd have to get a sheep farm. Finished. We're done. So yeah, please do give me some feedback on how loud the tractor is. Is it too loud? Is it perfect? Actually, that header did fit in there quite well. We probably don't need to move it. Right, so to conclude, let's go and check up on that tractor with the drill. Uh, thankfully, it only leaves one field to drill next time. So we really can spend plenty of time sorting out food for the cows. It's still going. Uh, it's doing a pretty good job. It's actually doing a very good job. Uh, I am impressed. Still got plenty of fertilizer and seed. Ah, now I, I think there's no collision on these. That explains the perfect drilling. Very wise idea, I must say. Yeah, although it's it's not like realistic um, I, I think it's for the best the worker it would just be a total pain otherwise and this is where we take over it's only worth having a worker if if I'm doing something else otherwise it's just a waste of money So yeah, we don't just have this piece, there will also be a piece over on that side. So let's get everything tidied up. And then it will just be field number 35, unless that is grass as well, but I don't think it is. I don't think it's any kind of pasture. Yeah, that looks like an actual field. So 35 next time. Something else which we'll certainly be doing on this series is maize. I really want to buy that old, I think it's 1980s, self-propelled class Jaguar forager, which I'll show you in the store in just a second. Just got to reposition. Okay. Hopefully that is wide enough. Not quite. But that is the second field done. So we're going to have plenty of wheat. Uh, the main reason for putting the wheat in is for straw. To not only pad out their feed mix, but also for bedding. Yeah, we're going to need plenty of space to store bales. So I think it's almost certain if we are going to do wrapped silage bells at some point we're going to have to use that pad but I'm going to try and use the pits as we have so much pit space ok right once that folds up let's take a look 
if I can see foragers. Let's just see here. Yes, that would be so nice to get. We will get it when we have got maize. To get maize, we're going to need a planter. So let's just take this back to the farm. We are going to have to keep all of the bigger machinery down here. So yeah, we're going to have to. Uh, I'm going to have to allocate different places for different machines. Um, that bale grab won't normally be living there. If I put this over on the right, we should still be able to pick it up. Possibly, we'll see. Uh, but this is going to be used next time anyway, so just pop it over here. Yeah, that'll be coming out. So, there we go. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this first episode of Purbeck. Uh, I'm going to absolutely love this. Bringing back lots of memories. But until episode two, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.